Hello there, I'm Alger Hill and welcome to some Hearts of Iron 4, Death or Dishonor. I am very happy to bring you a little look in this lovely new DLC, which revitalizes four countries in the Balkans, as well as that changes air combat and a variety of other cool changes. I'm going to be making three series for this lovely expansion, and it's going to be, one is going to be Austria-Hungary, another is going to be my multiplayer game with, hang on, let me remember them all, Quill, uh, the solo gamer, Marbazir, Cringer, and Pyrian Flax. There we go, I got them all. And this one's going to be a very special game, and I'm going to show you a very different style of play. I am going to be playing as Czechoslovakia. Now, Czechoslovakia is a very interesting country. Well, first of all, let me just tell you. So, four countries have had completely new national focuses and changed the gameplay entirely of the way they work. So, we have Czechoslovakia, Kingdom of Hungary, Yugoslavia, and Romania. Romania is also very interesting, which you can see in that multiplayer game that I'm putting up at the same time as this one. Um, it's actually very interesting because it's actually got a different governmental form. The, le the leader is basically like a crazy drunk. It's interesting. And Hungary can form Austria-Hungary and Yugoslavia. You can be Tito. But the Czechs are something very unique. Czechs get to be a defensive fortress. And I'm going to show you why. We're going to be playing in Iron Mode, regular, with historical AI focuses. For some reason, I'm not allowed to get achievements. I don't know why. I haven't changed the game at all. But whatever. And we're going to be calling this, of course, a very important thing. Because you need to make sure, guys, that you check... Wait, hey, check... Check yourself before you wreck yourself. This is very important, guys. Okay, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now... Czechoslovakia has a new focus tree that mainly focuses around defense. And this is the reason why we're playing of historical focuses on, because we want Germany to declare war on us in 1938. And they will. They will. Okay? They just will. It's a reality. So, I'm going to show you the new focuses very quickly, and we're going to take a look at how the game is going to play out. So first of all, we have lots of new trees. For starting from the left, we get a very cool fortification uh, focus tree, which is basically all about building up forts. Going down this route, you get, uh, you get um, not only do you get recruital population 0.3% per each of them, so that's 1.2% total recruital population, which will essentially double my 150,000 that I have available. You also get a tiny bit of army experience, but the main, main important thing, forts. You get forts in the Sudetenland, Bohemia, Eastern Sudetenland, and Western Slovakia, which is there, there, there and there which is basically going to cover all of germany and also austria because obviously austria will be anschlaust by the germans now something to note is you could also get hungarian line and polish line what these two do is they give you forts along the hungarian line and poland however something different these two add forts to the province and the state whereas these three set the fort level to a certain point meaning these ones will set it to three five and seven these ones will add three and two so don't build forts in, in those areas without using the focuses. It's just not important. This one allows you to get forts in Bohemia, um, which you can already do, can't you? No. And this one allows you to put some in Southern Slovakia and Western Slovakia and Moravia, which is very nice. Then we have the kind of standard factory one, which gives us industrial legacy for some civilian factory construction speed. Uh, arms exports, which gives us consumer goods factories minus 5% and a production efficiency growth. And it keeps giving you that, but it also gives you reduction of production costs for infantry equipment and then tanks. Then over here, you have a choice. You can either go check industry and get, uh, and get three, wait, three, six, nine factories here of civilian, or you can get Czech, Czechoslovakia industry and get six factories, so three less, but you also get the divided nation reduction, or rather the United Population, which removes the national focus of divided nation. Divided nation gives you minus 20% national unity, minus 0.5% rural population, and 2% consumer goods. So essentially it's like gaining all of those bonuses that have been taken away from you. The reason it exists is because Czechoslovakia was a relatively newish nation, and of course it's actually two nations of Czech, the Czech Republic, or the Czech nations, and the Slovak peoples. So they are a divided people. So I think this is quite cool. It ties together these kind of governments and nations. It's very cool. Um, alongside that, then we're going right, we can get the political tree. So the political direction, which gives you 150 political power. And then, of course, the standard decision, go left, go democracy, or go right. Going left brings you into communism. You also get to create your own kind of socialism, which also gets rid of divided nation, by the way. So if you go communism, you don't need to go this line. Uh, and you also get extra population for communism with a human face. Basically, we're going to put our faces on communism. And I hit my microphone, sorry. And then, of course, joining Comintern. And this is about dividing Romania and also dividing Poland. 
Going right into fascism gives us, of course, the Czech fascism and all that good stuff that comes with it. We get aggressive wars, which gives division organization and justify war goal time. Polish and Hungarian situations, we can conquer them. And then finally, what do we do with Germany? Do we become an ally in the Axis or do we become a kind of puppet, which is a bit lame. However, the one we're going to be doing is going democratic. And the reason we go democratic is there's some very interesting bonuses. Of course, you get a crap ton of political power, which is really nice. But you also get um, defensive, division defense on core territory plus 10%, which is huge because we're going to be defending. And then when you go down, we get defensive preparations, which gives you extensive conscription mobilization. Oh, wait, that changes mobilization lot. Oh, they changed this. It used to just give you the bonuses. Oh, that's lame. That just changes it to extensive conscription. Oh, no. Well, that's fine. It's fine. We're going to be, we need to, we need to do that anyway. We can spend our points better anyhow, but that means we do get a free um, change to extensive conscription, which I suppose is great. And then of course we can get a tech, which is very, very cool. And we're doing that also because of the, just because of the bonuses it gives us. And also we want to remain democratic. Going down to strategic decisions, we can get more political power. It's basically about what we want to do. Do we want to appease Germany and give it the Sudeten land? Maybe be a puppet? Do we want to trust in the West and have them help us and give us research bonuses? Or do we want to make our own entente with Yugoslavia and Romania and deal with Hungary and Bulgaria? And also we can send people away with the Czechoslovak Legion. Going right, we get the kind of standard military thing, you know, the choices of motorization, mechanism, armor. It's pretty basic, ahead of time bonuses and all that. However, one thing that's quite cool is War College, which allows you to get planning speed. It's a national spirit. It you get planning speed plus 10%, military leader cost minus 50%, and the starting level of all new army leaders is plus one, and you get a research slot. That seems crazy good to me. Like, that seems strong. It's just you gotta go down so many things. You gotta get all of these. One, two, so eight... 10, you have to get 12 to get that, it's crazy. The kind of standard air one and then the standard sea one. So, Germany will declare war in the early stages of 1938. So we have two and a bit years to be able to build up our defenses. Now that entails building up a crap ton of troops. So first of all, I'm going to show you my defensive pattern. We're going to, of course, be making a nice big defensive line with all of our divisions. Austria will be Anschlaust in the next year. So that will mean that we also have to defend this area. We'll get forts there, no problem. Anyhow. Generals, we've come very well equipped. We get Joseph Schnedderick, which gives you 30% entrenchment, which is amazing. So he's your boy right there. You also have this marshal here for planning speed and combat width, for fast movement, and this guy for tanks. So, of course, he will defend the territory. Oh, so good. We are going to set an offensive line. Um, we're not really going to get a lot of use out of it, but it's nice to kind of set that to get the planning bonus. And also, it looks pretty. So there we go. Now, here's what we need. We have two years, and, and every year you can maybe make, how many make, can you make, you can get five and a bit focuses, so 350 days, so that's five, yeah, five focuses generally per year. So we have about 10, maybe 11 focuses that we can do before the war is declared. So we definitely need those four, and we need those four. So that's going to be eight focuses already, so we only get three other focuses. So what I'm going to just, I'm going to do is I am going to... Make the decision to go basically Polish direct, political direction first to get political power. So I can change my conscription laws to limited so I can actually recruit some soldiers. Then we're going to go to Industrial Legacy and get three this way. So that's one there and then I can only get two. I want the civilian factories but I might go arms export. We'll see. And then it's just going to be fortification studies all the way down. So let's get political direction first. Oh baby, I'm excited. We're going to build one civilian factory. In right here, which is the much faster speed, and then we're going to build a whole bunch of military factories. Obviously in the best places of infrastructure. We're going to put basically all of our equipment onto infantry equipment, and then once that's done, one on support. Because we're going to need engineer battalions very shortly. Uh, we don't really need to trade for the aluminium, because we don't need it that much. And we're going to take the standard uh, research things of production, and then construction, and then the research electrical engineering thing. One thing we're going to definitely want very soon is the engineer company, so we need to research that well in advance of when the war comes. So we need to do that, like, desperately. Alright, that is the start. Let's do this. Also, while we're... I mean, there's going to be a lot of waiting for this one, so I'm going to be talking about the other campaigns that I'm playing, other nations you can play, and also looking at some of the other features available. So one of the features available is the changing of the air. So now we can click on an air an airport and we'll see a circle a spherical area this shows the range of airports that they can be placed in this shows the area that they can operate in efficiently and this shows the area they can operate in without much efficiency i do believe so we're going to move uh basically everybody 
into the Bohemian airport. So they're all just going to pile right in. They happen very quick because it's very fast. Then when clicking on the airport, you get a variety of choices, which means you can actually just set the mission per airport and just straight up be like, hey, oh, you're all going to go there. How great is that? So that's awesome. We also haven't assigned them to a, an air sphere yet, so they're not going to do anything. But that's fine. We can also set the mission execute day and night. I'm going to say only missions during the day because I'm not going to waste my stuff. And I'm, I'm going to put only fly missions if wings are at 25% strength. Yeah, I don't want to lose literally everyone. Actually, no, I want to put everyone. Oops. Low intensity. No retreat. There we go. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And also alongside that, we have a new thing called request license production. And what this does essentially is it allows you to basically be like, hey, could I, oh, Ryan Lansby Militarized, of course, could I maybe purchase uh, this? Can I please have this research so I can produce your equipment? So it's really, really useful, especially if you are, for example, a German puppet or you are an ally of Germany and you want to use German tanks because they are stupid good, you could purchase the license to be able to make them, and you can make them yourself, which is very cool. So we've got the production political direction, so that's fine. Next up, I'm going to go into Industrial Legacy to get that civilian factory construction speed bonus and also the civilian military conversion cost, though I never really do that. So that's fine. We're going to change our uh, conscription law to limited conscription, so as to be able to have a bit of recruitable population so we can actually get some troops trained. Our division template is basically just nine dudes. We're definitely going to want to put an engineer battalion in there very soon. Very soon. And away we go, basically. And so, now we wait, essentially. Also, I realized maybe we should actually put these guys on the front line to Poland. Ah, and of course we have the Spanish Civil War. Which is fine. No, what are you doing? I want to edit... Let me... There we go. Edit modes. Perfect. And there's the Spanish Civil War. Okay. We're not really going to play along in this whatsoever. It's not for us. We don't care about this. No, no, no. We defend ourselves. That's all we do, basically. We sit quietly. Now, so obviously we're on 5%, or 2.5% there. Extensive conscription is going to give us 5%, uh, which will be great. Ooh, there we go. So basically gonna, it's basically going to double the, the recruitable population available to us. We're on 2% right now. Wait, why is it 2.5%? Oh, because Divide Nation takes away 0.5. Yeah, it basically doubles the amount of population we have available, which is going to be very, very nice. Um, and now we've got that. I would like to grab the research bonus thingamajigger. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the other campaigns I'm going to be doing. So my other campaign, uh, you can see on the multiplayer series that I'm playing with all those other YouTubers. I mean, it's, if it, um, we finished, we recorded all in one bulk. But it's going to be uh, with Romania, which is right there, which is very cool. They have a very interesting governmental form. And you have to deal with their king being a complete douchebag, which is, I think is very interesting. Alongside that, I'm going to be playing Hungary. Hungary is awesome. And Hungary's going to be very awesome. I think everyone's going to play Hungary. So you expect to see a lot of other YouTube series doing the same thing. But mine's going to be special. In Hungary, what you do is you basically form the Austro-Hungarian Empire. You can reform it by basically electing a king, inviting a Habsburg uh, prince, and basically being awesome. That's so cool. I just think that's really, really cool. And yeah, it's going to be like, it's going to be really interesting in how you can like protect Czechoslovakia, the guarantee... And you can claim Transylvania. And you can do other cool things like that. But it does push you into um, wars with Germany very early. But oh well. Okay, so we just got the uh, industry one. So we're going to now grab arms export. Which gives production efficiency growth plus 5%. And consumer goods factories minus 5%. This is going to be really good. Because it's going to basically give us two free civilian factories straight off the bat. We got basic machine tools. So now we're going to take dispersed industry, not concentrated. Obviously, it's not as good, but the fact that it's dispersed is really, really, really good because we're going to be bombed to shit by Germany. Like, just to shit. Generally speaking, you want to go the other one always, but they're going to bomb the crap out of me. We now have political power, so we're going to go early mobilization. It's going to give us 5% more factories straight off the bat. Well, it didn't give us a lot. It gives us a 9, but that's fine. Um, means we don't have to get too much civilian goods being produced. We're starting to mobilize. Awesome. That's a very useful benefit to do that. Try and grab that as much of that as possible, you know. And then minus two, minus five percent as well from there is going to be really helpful. Oh, I forgot to deploy the units. Whoopsie daisy. There we are. Into Bohemia you go, men. Yes, four dudes recruited already. And look at that. We're starting to replenish our defenses. 
we're going to need to basically make a defensive force and then also think about constructing a defensive force so as to re so as to invade Germany, uh, you know, when they start putting too much stuff on the line. And we're also going to need a lot of population to deal with this. Uh, I don't remember being extensive conscription. That's so lame. So the only real ways to get population, generally speaking, are communism with a human face. Man, that sucks. You also get, with United Nations, you get 0.5, and you get 1.2% there, so... It adds up, it adds, except for the ones I was mentioning, obviously. But it does add up. Now, doctrine-wise, military doctrine, we're going to be going Grand Battle Plan. We're going Grand Battle Plan because it gives you the most entrenchment of any of them. Ten entrenchment flat out is insane. And the 25% entrenchment speed means that any territory we take, we can hold easier. Going down, we also get extra planning, more defensive organization, and finally some breakthrough and soft attack, which is very, very cool. The other one's really good. Grand Mass Assault also could be a good idea. Though Superior Firepower and Mobile Warfare are obviously the best ones. I desperately need the Entrenchment bonus. And without the Entrenchment bonus, I will get riggedy, riggedy wrecked. It's just how it is. Because we gotta build them trenches, guys. Alright? We gotta build the trenches. Otherwise, we're gonna die. Coolio. So, obviously, we are already depleting all of our manpower in recruiting as many troops as possible. But we need... Because we just need so many... But, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? So we got the arms exports. Good stuff. Now, I do want to go to the next arms exports because that's going to give us extra infantry equipment, which is going to be really useful. Or rather, it's going to reduce the cost of infantry equipment. And that's stupid valuable. Like, stupid valuable to have that. It's really, really good. All right. I'm going to keep doing that, which is great. Then we're going to start moving down towards the uh, fortification studies, which is going to give us the recruitable population we need to maintain our armies. It's only 0.3%, but... So 2% of eligible core population available. So 3%, it's 3.3... How much is that? So I obviously already lose 0.5, but 0.3%... I'll give this a little bit, bye-bye. So 0.3% of 15.17 million. I'm going to look it up. So point so zero point three percent of fifteen point one seven million is an extra forty five thousand men. Each division is it's actually gonna be about ten thousand we have the infantry brigades. So it's an extra four and a half divisions per one. So that's somewhat decent. God damn though. Cool, get the standard thing. There we are. Very good progress so far, guys. Very good progress indeed. I am pleased. Right. Do -do -do -do. Okay. Now, the factory... We're actually starting to build factories, which is great. We actually have 11 civilian factories now constructing stuff. Building as many military factories as possible. We can have enough now to get the extra infantry equipment and the extra support. Because we definitely do need to be building a lot of infantry equipment. Oh, man. We're already almost out of... We're already out of population. There we are. So as soon as the arms export's done, we need to get that 0.3%. Oh man, we need it. We uh, we need that. Population is hard to get, guys, is the thing. The next one down gives you kind of the same bonus as the previous one, but also extra infantry equipment, light tank, and, and tank production costs. We don't need that. We need fortification studies. We need recruitable population. Otherwise, we ain't gonna do shit. Um, one possibility is also that we could just move our... Um, Conscription to extensive conscription early. It increases training time pretty drastically, however, which we don't really want. Part of me considers maybe even just going communism to survive, but I want to go def I want to go defensive, and I want to be awesome. I can't have a defensive population changes it to extensive conscription. That's so stupid. I I already do that. That's so lame. I could I think they may have changed that. God damn. It's fine. All right, so we can also change the change this now. Uh, we can't go to partial mobilization because we don't have 15% world tension. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to pick up some of the other bonuses we can get. So, for example, one thing we could do, we could do Quartermaster General. Oh, where's the civilian factory defense one? Ah, oh, he's gone. That's lame. We could do Industry. We could do Army. One, the, by the time the war starts, we desperately need to have the Division Recovery Rate and the Army Defense bonus out there. But in the meantime, it might be best to actually get military theorists for doctrine research bonus and the army experience that we're going to need to be able to put engineer battalions on the ground. Hooray! So let's do it. 
We're gonna keep just keep recruiting troops, guys. Keep recruiting troops. Never stop the recruitment. So they're doing the anti turn pact, which we don't really want to be a part of. We're not. We're not really a part of that. We don't. We don't care. So I'm not gonna get the engineer company, which would be great. Oh, we have two. And we are gonna grab. Ooh, what should we have? We actually can make light tanks already. This is the thing. Uh, we're gonna grab the next generation of fighters, so that maybe we can start building some fighters. And maybe try to maintain some kind of air challenging capacity over the Germans, but we'll see. Alright, so in this first episode, we've done pretty well. We've managed to get through the first year of gameplay. I'm very pleased. So make sure you check out the other series I have on my channel. Please do leave me a like and a comment as well. I love to hear your feedback. Seriously, it's the best part about doing this. I love to hear it. Tell me anything, guys. And of course, you can also find my Patreon in the description if you want to support the channel further. I was Aldra Hill, and I'll continue to be, and there's been some Hearts of Iron 4, Death or Dishonor, Czechoslovakia. Remember guys, always check yourself before you wreck yourself. Bye bye <laughs>